Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of Colorado Denver's live presentation. Uh, we will be doing an information session for the next uh, for the next hour. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the presentation. You find it informative. Uh, please feel free to uh, you know, add any questions into the question box to the right, and I will address those questions as I see them. Um, so let's get started. Uh, you know, we. Uh, my name is Greg Hofer, and I am the International Recruitment and Admissions Coordinator for the University of Colorado Denver. Uh, I actively work to help uh, all students with the admissions process, and with, um, and, and also with recruitment it, uh, initiatives that we do when we travel abroad to um, various countries. Uh, currently, our university is actually traveling in South America at the moment. We are in um, we were in Brazil, uh, Argentina, Venezuela, Ecuador, uh, on this uh, recruitment trip. Later this uh, fall, we'll be going to Southeast Asia and to China and to India as well. So hopefully, if uh, you guys are in any of those areas, please feel free to contact me, and we'll let you know what kind of events we are participating in there. Let's uh, let's get started with the presentation. Um, what we're going to talk about today is some of the campus information that you'll need to know, uh, as well about the as well as the college selection process. Uh, we'll also then go through the application and admissions process, and I will then link you to uh, our you know campus tour, our virtual tour uh, that we have uh, available on our website. So where is the uh, University of Colorado Denver? We, or where is Colorado? For those of you that don't know, uh, Colorado is located in the western part of the United States in the Rocky Mountain region. Uh, you can see there, Den Denver is where that lovely little C interlocking CU is there. Um, and you know, we have a great location. We have a wonderful airport that's accessible. Uh, it's an international airport, so you can take direct flights from various uh, international locations, um, and we are a um, major uh, domestic hub, so there's lots of air traffic that goes in and out of Denver. It's very easy to get here, and it's very easy to get to the campus from the airport when you do actually arrive in Denver. Uh, so we'll start by talking a little bit about the college selection process. The college selection process, we feel, um, you know, with, with for any student, is going to really um, hit on the six key factors, you know, size, location, the academics and programs that are available at that university, the reputation of the university, the academic fit, um, you know, for the student, and of course, uh, the cost of the education itself. First, we're going to talk about size and why size is important in the college selection process. Uh, you know, in the enrollment, uh, for the enrollment factor, you know, the larger you know, the larger the university, the, typically the larger the class sizes are going to be. Um, you know, larger class sizes, um, you know, large lectures, a uh, little bit tend to have a little bit less um, personal attention for students. Um, you know, and whatnot. Our university is considered a medium-sized university. Um, we have very manageable class sizes. Our average class size is about uh, eight, you know is um, our teacher-student ratio is about eighteen to one. And um, we'll think we'll have a slide here coming up on that later. Some of the other things that are important when you're thinking about size of the university are the resources that are available on the campus. Some things to highlight on our campus is the Learning Resource Center uh, and you know, the Academic Advising Center, the Writing Center, where you can help get some um, you know, tutoring on any academic papers that you might need to turn in. We have extensive libraries available on campus, and we also have the Experiential Learning uh, Center, which is very useful for students who want to uh, pursue internships during their or volunteer experience during their undergraduate studies. That is an office dedicated to that. It's a one-stop shop. Students can go directly to that to find those opportunities. Um, more regarding size, our, in, our, in particular for our university, we have the um, Tivoli Student Union, which is the picture over here on the right on top. This is a historic building here in Colorado. Actually, used to be a uh, used to be a brewery um, when it was first built, and now it's converted into a movie theater, uh, and now is the central hub for student activity on our campus. Uh, campus Village is where most of our international students and incoming freshmen choose to live when they 
their first year. Uh, students do have options of other options besides Campus Village, um, but that is uh, our main uh, facility for uh, student housing. We also have a campus recreation facility, so students uh, that is free and included with their tuition and student fees that they pay, so students have access to that recreation center. Um, but you know, a lot of students uh, and a lot of people in Colorado choose to uh, go outside and be active. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, the recreation center may not be as busy as some of the other campuses you might see around the United States because you know Colorado does have such a beautiful uh, you know, natural setting. Uh, lots of you know people and you know people love to go outside and you know do a lot of the exercise and activities uh, outside and enjoy those things. Institutional technology services. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi throughout the entire campus. Uh, that is you know obviously included. So any building you are on on the CU Denver campus, you will get uh, Wi-Fi access, and in your campus dorms, of course, as well. How does size really impact the classroom? Uh, you think about diversity is one real thing that comes to mind at CU Denver because we do have such a diverse background of students, uh, both domestically, they come from um, various uh, you know, ethnicities, um, different, you know, uh, economic backgrounds and you know we have and then when you throw all the international students in that as well we've welcomed over students from over 130 countries in our history so um, you know we have an extremely diverse campus we have one of the most diverse campuses in the state of Colorado so that's very apparent when you walk around uh, and you know are, are going to your classes and you know, participating in any of your activities you can really feel the diversity in the classroom and on campus and you know that that will give a little bit of variety to what your experience will be here. You know, that everybody's experience at CU Denver is not the same. There's a lot of, we're, uh, you know, we are in downtown, we have a diverse student body, so everyone will have different opportunities and different, um, you know, different uh, perspectives that they can, with the different activities that we have and different student clubs that you can um, engage in, uh, everyone's going to have a, you know, there's a lot of variety uh, to choose from here on campus. Location. Uh, this is a picture of our campus. As you can see, downtown Denver is, um, you know, is, a, is our backdrop. I mean, we are on the edge of downtown Denver. Uh, so you, we're, we're right across the street of, so if you were on Spear Boulevard, uh, which is the one of the major streets that here in Denver that divides our campus and the downtown Denver area. Um, so if you walk across that street, you're right in downtown. Uh, part of our campus does extend into the downtown area. That's including the business school. And where I am actually presenting from today, which is at the International Admissions Office, in you know, which we share space with the uh, English uh, ESL Academy, or English as a Second Language Academy. Um, and you know, so that's, uh, that's very ideal for students who do study English here because we have a great location right on the 16th Street Mall. It's a very marquee area of the city of Denver. Um, it's very popular for anyone that does come here to visit and for um, just locals as well who come to enjoy the city. Continuing more on location, uh, just kind of going through some of these pictures you see here. Uh, you know, we, we are right, going back to it, we're right in downtown. So here's the picture of the uh, local Denver Library. Uh, Denver is the capital of Colorado. So here's a picture of the Capitol building. Uh, here down below is the Art Museum, which is a very modern, uh, modern design building. Um, and then continuing on, this is a picture of our medical campus, which is actually out in Aurora, but is, is a state-of-the-art you know, medical campus that was is quite new. We They moved from one area of Denver to this new facility um, recently within the last 10 years. So it's it's uh, brand new, it's big, and it's, it's state of the art. So anyone who's interested in medical programs, this is a place to be. Um, continuing on, we have a picture of our botanical gardens. Um, this is the city and county building here in the middle on the right that lights up every Christmas um, all the way through uh, you know, the stock show that we have every year. Uh, we have a very western uh, kind of atmosphere here. A little bit of cowboys sometimes. So you know, with the uh, stock show that comes every January, um, that's a that's a very cool event that people can participate in, and uh, you can kind of get a little bit of a feel of the West. So the city and county building is lit up from the Christmas um, period all the way through to the stock show. Going back to location, so you know, Denver has. Uh, 
Denver is a major uh, metropolitan area with a lot of professional sports teams. We have an NFL team, the Denver Broncos, a Major League Baseball team, the Colorado Rockies. We have a Major League Soccer team, the Colorado Rapids. We also have a National Hockey League team, the Colorado Avalanche, and a National Basketball Association NBA team, um, the Denver Nuggets, as well as some other local teams uh, that, that we have lacrosse. Um, is a big one that comes to mind as well. So we're a very uh, sports-centric city. We love our sports. Um, it's a great way to get involved in the in the city and to, you know, uh, feel a little bit of the local feel uh, here in Denver. So if you do come here, make sure that you check out one of uh, the you know, local uh, sporting events that we have on hand. Uh, Red Rocks Amphitheater down here at the bottom. We have one of the best amphitheaters in the United States. It's um, built in. At, um, in, in Red Rocks Park, it's, it gets all kinds of musical acts that come from all around the world. It, it's a, usually a very marquee place for bands and musicians to come because they love the venue so much. It's beautiful, it has great sound, great acoustics, and um, it's definitely something that you should check out as well. If you are ever in Colorado, um, if you come to see you Denver, you definitely will want to check that out for sure. Um, all the concerts are typically in the summertime. Um, they're, Definitely some some that are still going on now. They usually stop kind of towards the beginning of fall, so they'll be wrapping up soon. Uh, we do have a uh, amusement park that's right in downtown, almost across the street from our campus. So that's a really fun thing to enjoy in summertime as well. Um, you know, location. So another thing is we have a very very safe campus. Denver's a very safe city in general. Our inner city is. Um, you know, walkable. It's something that you know students can walk anywhere in the Denver, you know, central Denver, and feel safe at all times. We also have um, medical. You know, we have an emergency notification system that we help notify students of any inclement weather that might be happening or any other emergency that they might need to know about. And we also have a um, a system, a lighting system on campus that, if students do have some safety issue that they need to, uh, they need to. Uh, they need to get in touch with someone right away. There's uh, there's phones throughout campus that they can get in contact with someone in case there is an, is an emergency. Looking at academics and programs now, uh, CU Denver has seven undergraduate uh, colleges and schools. Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, with 36 undergraduate degree programs, and when we look at our graduate uh, schools, we then that would en en encompass 13 graduate and professional schools. Uh, we have a dual campus model, so what does that mean? Uh, we have the Denver, the downtown campus, which is where I am now, which is kind of where that picture that you saw earlier was, um, that's right in the heart of downtown. And then the medical campus is actually in Aurora, which is about 20 minutes east of, uh, of here, of downtown. Um, and the, that's where all the medical, uh, you know, all the medical you know, uh, campus um, and all the medical programs are gonna be as well as the, the University of Colorado Hospital. Uh, another thing that we have is we do have a university honors and leadership program for our undergraduates. So, you know, for really um, motivated and really strong students, I encourage you to get involved in that program. You can actually get a minor in leadership from that participation in that program. So um, do, that's something to consider as well. Here's just some of our top academic programs, uh, some of our more popular programs, uh, not only with international students, but um, you know, just in general on campus, you see the economics, business. We have a brand new business school that the business school building just opened up uh, last year. Uh, so that is, that is a bonus. Accounting is a very strong and popular program. Um, electrical engineering, human resource management. Uh, at the graduate level, uh, computer science is by far our uh, most applied to program, um, as well as some of the other engineering uh, programs as well. Pharmacy is a very strong uh, program that we have on the medical campus, very competitive. Uh, finance as well, we have a commodity center that we just opened up in our business school, was part of that new business school opening that I just mentioned. Um, and uh, dentistry is another very strong, very competitive program that we have on the medical campus as well. So I'm trying to go to my next slide, but uh, let me do it this way. Okay, that worked instead. Okay, so looking at the 
first one of our uh, schools and colleges that we'll look at is the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. At our undergraduate level, this is our largest uh, largest school with over 20 majors. Um, you know, your biology, anthropology, political science, chemistry, all these kind of things are going to be within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Uh, you know, the, the goal of the curriculum, of the core curriculum with the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is to develop critical and analytical skill development for, for each student. Um, there's also some pre-professional -prof preparation options, uh, pre-health options, uh, pre-med, pre-dentistry, pre-pharmacy. Um, for those not qualified for the business school straight away, there's a pre-business pre and pre uh, and similar to engineering. Uh, if you're not prepared for engineering, you can start pre-engineering as well. Um, there's also a pre-law track. We do not have a law school here at CU Denver, but there is a pre-professional track that would prepare you if you do want to prepare for law in the future and go to law school. Um, the law school that we do have within the CU system, the University of Colorado system, is at our Boulder campus, which Boulder is about 45 minutes uh, northwest of Denver, um, and so not too far away. Next uh, one we'll talk about is the School of Business. Um, the you know, business school is an internationally accredited by the AACSB that puts us in the top 5% of business schools worldwide. It's a very uh, special accreditation and something that you should really look for if you are looking at a business program. Uh, the eight majors that are included within the business school include accounting, finance, marketing, HR, international business. And something to point out about the international business program is we are a cyber school. Cyber is, um, again, one of, you know, in terms of international business, is one of the more reputable organizations. So having um, that classification as a cyber school really helps make our international business program one of the more competitive ones in the United States. Um, management, uh, information systems, and sports management is another very popular one, again, because our setting here in Denver is a very uh, big sports town. So having a sports management program is um, a great way to get you know, dialed into that, uh, to that, to that industry. You can also, we also have two minors that are available. One of the new ones I want to point out is the risk management and insurance minor. That's something that we had brand new that just was offered two years ago for all the, uh, all the opportunities that are, that are available in that industry at the moment. So, so there's something to think about. Here's a picture of our commodity center that I, that I mentioned earlier. It's a, the JP Morgan Center for Commodities. If you're in finance and you want to get into that uh, type of finance, this is the, you know, this is a, one-of-a-kind facility in the U.S. and it was the uh, first center dedicated to commodities um, on, on any campus in the U.S. So, <clears throat> moving on. If there are any questions uh, during the presentation, feel free to uh, you know type those in the question box, and I will address those as they come available. Now moving on to the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. This is, uh, we have a very excellent engineering school and this is full of um, a lot of our more uh, po you know, popular programs as well, including mechanical engineering, civil engineering, computer science, uh, electrical engineering, and a bioengineering program. The bioengineering program, uh, students would um, do some of their coursework on the downtown campus as well as some of the work on the Anschutz Medical Campus as well. College of Arts and Media. So, if this is if arts or theater um, or uh, media design is something that you're really into, this is this is where you'll probably find something uh, of interest. You can see we have some degrees in music, particularly music business, uh, you know, music performance, recording arts. As you can see with the fine arts options that we have, art history, 3D animation. Um, you know, transmedia, things that stand out. We also have a media forensics program um, at the, the master's level that, that is, uh, you know, quite, um, you, know, you know, strong, I would say, so. And there's a little note down here, so CAM students have won regional Emmys, which is uh, really cool. So uh, there's some talented folks in that department over there, so. The College of Architecture and Planning, uh, they recently launched a, you know, bachelor's in architecture, uh, so, you know, with, to accompany their very, very, very reputable graduate uh, studies that they offer there. So CU Denver is now the only college in Colorado that is offering a bachelor's in architecture. So, um, 
you know, really put in given where our location is in downtown. And I mean, it's just, it's a really great environment to, um, you know, to study, or, you know, architecture and you know, design. The School of Public Affairs, those who are have interest in uh, law or you know, criminal justice, this is the degree for you. Now, the, the public School of Public Affairs only has the one undergraduate program, which is criminal justice. Um, you know, but that is, like I said, would lead to graduate study where you're um, working on public policy, if you want to go into law school, if you want to get a career in forensics or social work, uh, then the criminal justice undergraduate program would be ideal for you. School of Education and Human Development, they recently just launched an undergraduate program, um, you know, so you can, get, you can get your bachelor's in education from the School of uh, Education and Human Development. Um, you know, so if you're looking to prepare to be a teacher or if you would like for more administrative roles in the future, this is something that um, might be a fit for you. Uh, make sure that you do uh, contact the School of Education in terms of licensure, especially as international students. It can, uh, there's some different rules and regulations that need to be met in order to um, you know, get those licenses. So please, as it says here, license to teach in the U.S. requires citizenship or permanent residency. Um, and it has limited exceptions. So. Now with the health career, so as I mentioned, we do have the dual campus model. So most of our medical um, programs are at the graduate level. So if you do want to you know, you know, pursue you know, those medical programs, you're going to want to think about a pre-health, uh, maybe a pre-health career for undergraduate. You would have an overall arching a degree, say biology or chemistry, that would be your, um, you know, your overarching degree focus. But you'd have a pre-health track, and as you can see over here, we have some pre-health options, including pre-dentistry, pre-medicine, pre-optometry, pre-pharmacy, um, pre-veterinary veterinary medicine. All of these options are available um, as a track to prepare you for graduate study later on, and uh, prepare you for. Um, you know, and the very competitive programs that are on the medical campus at the graduate level. Looking at some of our graduate and professional schools, um, you know, we, we talked already about architecture, arts and media, business, education, engineering, um, liberal arts and sciences. Some of the other ones on here, uh, the School of Dental Medicine, uh, School of, uh, the College of Nursing. We have one, very, very, very reputable uh, nursing program, SCAG School of Pharmacy and Pharma Schools of Sciences, and the Colorado School of Public Health. Um, these are, um, that kind of rounds out our graduate schools. Some international students, uh, you know, they may not have the English, um, they, they may not have all the English skills that they need to enter directly into their degree program. Um, when they initially apply, and that's not a problem. I mean, when you do apply, um, you know, there are some programs that offer what we call conditional admission. Conditional admission means that you can apply with uh, your academics, your from high school or your undergraduate, in your home country, and just submit those transcripts. And then, if you do not have your English complete yet, um, we'll just look strictly at your academics and review you for conditional admission. If if you are offered conditional admission, it means that you're accepted on the condition that you will fulfill the English requirement at a later time. One of the ways to fulfill that English requirement is uh, through our ESL Academy. And students who complete the ESL Academy are well prepared for success at CU Denver. Uh, another option that students do take is you know, just completing a TOEFL or an IELTS exam. That is an option, of course. But we do believe and we're very confident in our uh, curriculum in the ESL Academy and how well it prepares students for success in their degree program. Um, I did just talk a little bit about the conditional admission. Uh, in order to be considered for the conditional admission, you'll just want to complete the online application satisfy all the academic requirements that are needed, uh, then we will automatically review you for conditional admission if it is available for your particular program. 
And looking at reputation, uh, you know, why is that important? Well, you really want to know that where you're where you're investing your money and your time is going to get lead you, you know, to where you want to go in your life and in, in, in your career goals. So having a strong reputation is for a university is extremely important in doing that. And the University of Colorado brand is well known not only in the United States, in the U.S. but globally. Uh, and you know, so we do have. You know, the University of Colorado Denver is where we are now, University of Colorado Boulder, and the University of Colorado Colorado Springs. That makes up the CU system. And the CU system, again, is just a very well-recognized, globally recognized university system. And like CU Denver as well, our graduates are do succeed. They go on to do big things, not only in Denver, but in their home countries. And, that, um, and we have a strong alumni network from that. Some of the rankings that you're going to want to pay attention to uh, that are pertinent to uh, CU Denver is that we are one of the top 50 research universities in the United States. We also are one of the top 100 public universities, uh, you know, top 200 nationally. And we are featured in the U.S. World News Report, um, you know, the Princeton Review, but, you know, as best, best Western Colleges and Best in the West. As far as accreditations, I did mention the Business Schools Accreditation, uh, AACSB. The Landscape Architectural Accreditation Board Lab, um, you know, the National Archite Architecture Accrediting Board NAB, um, and we do have other, you know, you know, as, I'm not going to go through them all here, but we do have over 40 specialized accreditations for our degree programs, and that's, you know, the, the, that's that's exactly what you want to be looking for when you're looking at your program, no matter where you choose, is you want to make sure that that accreditation is a recognized um, recognized body. Our, our undergraduate students in the past five years have gone on to do some, you know, gone into some great graduate programs. Um, we have some wonderful graduate programs here, but sometimes students choose to go elsewhere, and they've gone to some of the top schools in the U.S. Uh, you can see Cornell, Emory, uh, Michigan State, um, Yale University. Um, there was also a recent graduate from Brazil who um, she graduated as a, she was an international studies major. And she went on to Stanford University for her grad for her graduate work in um, to get her master's in international relations. Another thing to think about in terms of reputation is not only the academics of the school and you know the reputation of the campus and the university, but the reputation of the the place where you live and and everything that surrounds it. So Colorado has. A very, very wonderful reputation as you know, having a clean mountain environment. We are set up against the Rocky Mountains. Uh, it's a, you know, we are very lucky to have such natural beauty around us um, and at such quick access um, for you know for for our residents here in, in Colorado. Um, in terms of the our business environments, we have one of the strongest economies in the United States. Uh, that also leads to, you know, we are home of two Fortune 500 and 1,000 companies. And we are the largest city within a 1,000 kilometer radius. Um, so we are a hub in this region, and, uh, and we are the largest city um, within 1,000 kilometers. Uh, research, there's, we are a research, top research university. I told you earlier that we are top 50. Um, in the U.S., we actually receive more research funding than Harvard. Um, a lot of that is due to our medical campus and all the research funding that goes to our medical campus, but we do have a lot of research funding that goes towards our downtown degree programs as well. Oh, excuse me, I need a little drink here. Okay. I mentioned our, earlier about our honors and leadership program. It's something if you do get accepted, you would apply to the Honors and Leadership Program um, after acceptance. Uh, it's for those who really are demonstrating intellectual curiosity. And then you will be able to complete a minor um, with you know, multidisciplinary research methods or leadership studies. Going back to our uh, one of our you know, other six core um, decision students or areas students should look at when making a decision about university is academic fit. You know, and the reality is, is maybe CU Denver is not um, the best fit for everyone. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, university, you know, there's, you know, types out there. So um, we do feel that, you know, 
being a medium-sized university, uh, we we do have a lot to offer. Offering so many different degree options, we do have there's so many a variety of different degree types that students can um, that students can take on. So let's take a look a little bit more about academic fit and looking at the profile of our admitted students. So last year um, for, we, we received over 6,000 applications, just over 6,000 applications. The number of the students that were matriculated or accepted essentially were, you know, just over, or sorry, just uh, 2,348 2, with an average incoming GPA of 3.3 .3 out of 4. And um, for those of you who may be concerned about, you know, GPA, what does 3.3 .3 out of 4 mean? Or uh, my home country, we use something different. Uh, that's fine. You know, the International Admissions Office, we are going to go ahead and convert your uh, GPA from your home country and we will do the conversion into a US scale and you do not have to get a third party evaluation from companies like WES or ECE, ECC. Uh, we will do that for you here as part of your application fee so we'll, we'll make that evaluation as part of that process. Um, over half of our uh, students are in the top 25 percent of their class so this is like I said we have a lot of really smart um, students as you can see, the sign um, behind me here, home of the brilliant. That's uh, we, we, to, we like to think that way, uh, especially for those that do choose to come here. We think they're a little bit smarter, uh, a little bit wiser, um, and uh, they make a real good choice to come to come to Denver and come to our campus here in downtown Denver. Let's take a look a little bit. Uh, take a look about the cost. Um, you know, we do. You know, this the, the costs do vary by program. This estimate is for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences in particular. Uh, if you do want to get a detailed information about the cost for your particular program, I do recommend that you, you know, either contact me and I can help you with that, uh, or you can Google uh, CU Denver Financial, Financial Sponsorship Calculator, at which point you will uh, be uh, you'll be sent to a, a link to uh, our financial sponsorship calculator, which is on our international student and scholar services website, they are basically our immigration team that helps students uh, with their I twenties. Um, they also, in terms of financial guarantees, financials that need to be shown prior to coming for an international student, um, that that is what that financial sponsorship calculator will help you get the figure that you you need to get your I twenty and whatnot. So if you when you're in the financial sponsorship calculator. If you go ahead and select which program you're interested in, it will then calculate an estimate of tuition, uh, and it will then also calculate an estimate of the uh, student living costs and fees and insurance that you will incur. Scholarships and financial aid. Uh, we financial system financial assistance for international students on our campus is limited, but we do have two really really great awards that we're very happy and excited about that we offer each year to two incoming freshmen, uh, international freshmen each year. It's the it's the presidential award we call it, and it is for twenty thousand dollars. It um, and it's for twenty thousand dollars over the span of you know eight semesters or four years of study here so um, with each semester of study uh, and if you maintain your the academic standards that you need you will then uh, re keep receiving that money for the duration of your undergraduate course um, coursework uh, I do recommend also for other scholarship opportunities especially if you're a transfer student or if you're a graduate student uh, definitely visit the scholarship resource office uh, and they or their website they have a website that details all the you know the application process and what type of scholarships are available and both like I said, undergraduates um, and graduate level and the different schools and colleges have their own specific ones as well so please visit there for more options for scholarships um, oh I guess I should add one thing about the presidential award so for the for, to be eligible for the presidential award, uh, all you really have to do is be a freshman and apply. Uh, once an international student applies, um, you know if they if there's a, you know grade point average is above a 3.75 out of four, uh, we will they will be automatically considered. It's very competitive, so you know our top students 
are the ones that are eligible for that. So um, if a student is accepted and eligible, they will be contacted by our department automatically. There's no extra application that is necessary for the presidential award. So that's a good thing and it kind of makes things a little easier for you. All right, so I've got a lot of information so far. Um, I've touched here and there about different things on the admissions process, but let's let's get let's get to what's what's important. Um, we do practice rolling admissions here at CU Denver. Roll, what rolling admissions means is that you know we accept applications all year long. You can apply anytime for your uh, for your degree, and once your application gets in and it's complete, you will be reviewed for a decision. We don't uh, we don't wait and until to review applications at one one time every year you know we um, you know it's an ongoing process and if uh, for some reason especially for international students maybe they need to study an IELTS or TOEFL um, at the graduate level maybe you need to you know get your GMAT um, or GRE in and so maybe if you apply first but you don't have those test scores yet and then maybe you know the deadline passes and you didn't get your test score in well your your applications are automatically going to go to the next term your, your application is good for one year so if you apply for spring 2014 your application is actually good all the way until spring 2015 if for some reason you need more time to study for some of those tests that may be required um, in terms of deadlines for undergraduate applications you see the deadlines here we have preferred deadlines and uh, final deadlines uh, for spring. That's the deadline that's coming up uh, quickly here. September 15th is the preferred deadline, and October 15th is the final deadline. The difference between the two is, as far as international students go, is really more of a visa issue because we want students to have enough time to get their decision and then get their uh, appointment at the U.S. consulate to then get their, you know, to their, get their visa interview to come into the country. Uh, so that is, if you get your stuff in by the preferred deadline, uh, we can almost assure you that you know, you'll get your decision and your paperwork and all the stuff necessary to get here in time to start in January, which is when the spring term begins. Um, the final deadline, especially for students who are here in the U.S. who already have a visa, Maybe they're transferring from another university. Maybe they're transferring, or maybe they're at an English school here in the U.S. and they want to begin their academic, their, their degree studies. Um, then you know that final deadline is a little bit more pertinent because you have a little bit more time and you don't need to worry about the visa interviews. But that's something to keep in mind uh, when you are applying. Uh, and something to keep in mind, as you see here, for the. Uh, University Honors and Leadership Program, you do want to make sure you get your stuff in by the priority, priority deadline. All right, the more about the admission process. Uh, what is required? Uh, we really just need you to fill out the online application. The online application is available at internationaladmissions.ucdenver.edu. Uh, once you're on our homepage, there's an Apply Now button right on the front there. Uh, you have a choice to go directly to the online application or to the instructions. Uh, the instructions are going to lead you to basically what we have here, uh, what is required. So the online application, fill that out, uh, fill out all your information. The payment page is the last page, um, at which time you'll have to pay a $75 application fee. I should mention uh, those um, who participate in the College Week Live platform are eligible for an application fee waiver. So if you're undergraduate and you are applying and you've been using and you you are here listening to this presentation or you were chatting with me in the chat room, you are eligible for an application fee waiver. Uh, all you would do is just select in the payment page. You would just check the little box that says waiver instead of the other ones which say pay by credit card or pay by check. You would say you know waiver uh, and then uh, when I process your application, I then know I can you know see that you selected waiver and um, I might follow up with you about, you know, did you participate in College Week Live or something like that, and then, boom, the fee is waived. Uh, at the graduate level, if you're trying to use College Week Live uh, application fee waiver, you have to select the pay by check option, which is at the, uh, which is in the last section of the online application. So they don't have the waiver option there, but you would select pay by check, and again, I would follow up with you about that and, um, and check in your and waive the application fee for you. So, 
So far we have two things, the online application and number two, there's your fingers, number two, the $75 application fee. Uh, third and very important thing is the official academic transcripts in English uh, you know, need to be sent to us. We do need both versions. We need your version in your home language um, and uh, in the English translation. Um, so if you if you need to get your documents translated, they just need to be translated by an official um, translation service. They'll usually put some type of stamp on there that indicates that they, you know, um, of their certification. So make sure that we get those academic transcripts. Uh, we do need officials. Um, if during the application process, you, you know, you, I would uh, recommend uploading unofficial copies into the online application. It can expedite things a little bit for you and move the process along a little bit faster. So when you're in the online application, one of the sections is uh, gives you an opportunity to upload documents. This is where you would upload your essay, uh, maybe your resume if you have one. Um, but you know those are optional things, especially at the undergraduate level. At the graduate level, you're going to need those, but you can upload those documents. So at that time, if you have an unofficial copy, you know of your transcript, I would I would just upload that in there. It just helps us move your application along a little bit faster. And then that way, that way, whenever your official documents do arrive, you know, we can just check them in. So we do that to kind of help you know, international students. I know there's going to be some time lags um, between requesting transcripts and having them actually sent here. So that way we, we help hopefully ease that uh, burden a little bit for international students. The final piece of the application, so piece number four, um, is the official standardized test scores. And for undergraduate study, that pretty much means you know the TOEFL or IELTS. At the graduate level, that could mean a GMAT, GRE, in addition to the TOEFL or the IELTS. Um, we require a 75 is what we is the minimum uh, requirement that we request on our TOEFL, and our IELTS requirement uh, minimum requirement is a 6.5. Uh, the minimum subscores, there are minimum subscores that need to be met for both the TOEFL and the IELTS. If you need any more information about what those minimum subscores are, it is available on our international admissions website. And that again is internationaladmissions.ucdenver.edu. Uh, and, yeah, and then I, as I mentioned before about conditional admission, if you do not have that English piece, uh, at the undergraduate level you'll automatically be considered for conditional admission. Some graduate programs will have that option, um, not all, so do check with me about which program offers conditional admission at the graduate level. But um, for certain, every undergraduate program does have a conditional admission option. So if you're going for conditional admission, you really only need three things. Online application, your applica um, the academic transcripts, and your you know, essay if you want it. If you're going for full admission directly into your degree program, then you would need the online application, your transcripts, and the TOEFL or IELTS test. Um, so that should uh, wrap up the admissions process. Um, I mentioned a couple of this, things, things already. At the undergraduate level, the essay is recommended but it is optional we obviously understand some students don't have the English ability to maybe write a coherent essay at the, at the at, you know when they're applying and that's totally fine however if you can it's really wonderful for us to kind of learn more about you um, you know so it's we really love to read the essays I mean they're great it kind of gives us a little picture about your life and your background and what your goals are so we do encourage you to write something of that sort you know let us know why you want to come to see you Denver and how can see you Denver um, you know, really help you attain your goals academically and professionally. Uh, you know, personal statement, I think these are going to be more at the graduate level, that these are going to be necessary, and resume as well. You know, resume is something that's going to be required for graduate applications. Um, undergraduate students may not have a resume yet. Um, if you do, great. If you don't, no problem at all. And uh, letters of recommendation. Sometimes students have them, undergraduates have it from high school counselors, or um, you know, high school teacher, those are optional. At the graduate level, they're going to be required. Uh, some degree programs request two. A lot of them request three letters of recommendation. And when you're in your graduate application, the 
you'll just you'll enter the email address of the recommender and they'll send a form directly to that recommender that the recommender can choose to either fill out the form or the recommender can if they have a letter ready they can just respond with that letter that's fine as well how to send us documents uh, all right so we have our address here uh, the address is also available on our website if again internationaladmissions.ucdenver.edu uh, then you'll have a little mailing information is um, pretty clear right up in the front you can click on the mailing information it'll give you that uh, mailing info you know the address that you need to send stuff to but uh, as you can see here we are at 1050 17th Street uh, suite A300 Denver Colorado 80204 right in the heart of downtown so um, another thing you could do is send documents to our uh, general inbox for international admissions that email address is highlighted there application at ucdenver.edu uh, that will allow you know that that's another way of sending things um, you know again you can send us unofficial copies of transcripts that way as well if you didn't upload it if you didn't upload something into your online application feel free to email us at this um, at this address and we'll add that to your application um, just make sure that if you have applied that you you know if you remember your ID number put that on there and if you don't have your ID number just you know clearly state your first and last name on any document that you do send to us. All right, so what do we look at when we're considering admission uh, for students? Well, there's a lot of, we, we have a holistic review process, so there's not just one factor that's, that we're going to look at. We're going to look at a number of things. You know, fulfillment of specific course requirements. So like if we're going into engineering, if students going into engineering, then we want to make sure that they have the, the math that, the, you know, that is going to, allow them to succeed um, you know we want to see that you've maybe taken some challenge courses throughout your time did you take any honors or IB or AP classes while in high school what are your grade trends like I mean you know someone who maybe started off in high school and their grades were really poor but maybe they finished strong that, that's an upward grade trend and you know that's something that we'll take into consideration when looking at uh, a student. Um, on the flip side, if someone has a downward grade trend, so maybe they did really well their freshman year and sophomore year in high school, and then everything just went south from there, and and they weren't doing so hot. You know, they weren't doing very well. So, um, a downward grade trend is something that we also look at. Um, so, uh, you know, I told you about the English proficiency. We obviously are going to be looking for that, and we're looking at those test scores to see how strong um, they are. Obviously. The better your English, uh, typically, the more likely you are to, you know, succeed here at uh, CU Denver. Uh, and those SAT or ACT results, this is only required for engin engineering students. So if you're an undergraduate and you're looking to go directly into the School of Engineering, College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, you will need to have an SAT or an ACT and meet the math requirements uh, for those for that. Um, for that college. If you don't have an SAT or an ACT, that's not a problem. You're still, you would just begin as a pre-engineer in the pre-engineering program instead of going directly into the engineering program. The pre-engineering program, the student would then need to complete calculus one and two and physics one and two, with thing is a B average, um, uh, and it's a B or B minus, but, and then once, the, once success, once they completely, or uh, they complete successfully complete that those requirements. They will then uh, be allowed to apply directly to the uh, you know, College of Engineering. All right. So what's going to happen? Basically, we're going to have about five different decisions that we can give you upon you know you know completing your application and after you go through the admissions process. You know we're going to contact you with one of these five decisions. First, of course, is admission to CU Denver. Congratulations. Woo! You made it. So that is what we hope. That's what we like to do. That's our favorite thing to do is admit um, qualified students. So hopefully that is the the reality for you when you apply. Uh, the other option might be admission to a pre-professional program. Uh, as I told you before, the business school uh, has a little bit higher requirement than some of our other schools and colleges. So if you're, if you're not able to go directly into the business school, you can start in pre-business. As I told you too about engineering. Engineering, if you don't have the math scores or the ACT, SAT to go directly into engineering, 
you will be eligible for pre-engineering. So that's one of the options. So if you apply to engineering originally, you may get an offer to pre-engineering um, in, in the end. So third thing, conditional admission. As I told you before, if you don't have your English complete yet and you submit your transcripts, we'll be able to review you for conditional admission at which time you'll have to complete the TOEFL or the IELTS or our ESL Academy. Uh, we also may request more information. Uh, some country, you know, sometimes we don't have all the grades that we need. Sometimes students uh, maybe send a transcript that only has two years of high school. Well, we need at least three years of high school. We'd prefer four years if we can, but not all, you know, all high school systems are the same as they are here in the U.S., so we understand that um, sometimes four years of high school isn't available because high school isn't four years. So we do need at least three years of high school to make a decision. Um, but there may be a situation where we uh, request more information from you. The final option, uh, we don't like to do this, but unfortunately it has to happen sometimes, we may deny admission. Um, in your denial letter, uh, the, it, it'll usually explain why you were denied and if, the, if we encourage you to reapply later on. One of the denial letters does state that you know, we, we would love, we'd love to have you still but we want you to you know go to the community college for a little while and you'll know, take it you know 30 credits there if you do really well at the community college at that point reapply and then we'll look at you again for admission so those are the five uh, possible decisions that you might get from us and uh, hopefully it's uh, an acceptance uh, the CU promise so those who are starting at the community college which uh, we, we actually our campus does share space with a community college, uh, the uh, sorry, the community college, uh, so CCD, uh, Community College of Denver, uh, is kind of adjacent to our campus. Students who begin at the community college level, we have something that's called the CU Promise. It's a partnership between our university and the community college system here in Colorado. So students who complete an associate's degree or 60 credits at the uh, at the community college. All those credits are going to be guaranteed to transfer here to CU Denver. So you would be able to continue your degree and get the four-year bachelor degree from our school um, if you have successfully completed an associate's degree at one of those participating community colleges. All right. Uh, after you, if you, if upon acceptance, if you are accepted, what will happen? You will uh, you'll get an admission letter from us saying congratulations. And that decision letter will have that acceptance and will explain some of the next steps. Uh, but one of those next steps will be gaining access to the student portal and your CU Denver email account. So upon acceptance and upon us matriculating you in the system, you will be accepted and then you will receive uh, information about how to claim your student account, how you'll, uh, and, and, and that'll come from the CU system usually about a day or two after receiving your decision letter. Uh, the, our immigration office will also get in touch with you. Uh, they will send you an information about how to, uh, an immigration clearance form that will give you information about how to obtain your I-20 and what information they need from you to do so. So they will follow up with you after your acceptance, usually within three to five business days. Uh, our academic advising center will then also follow up with you. They will want to schedule an appointment to go over your degree plan to then help you choose classes that, that you'll want to take. Uh, another thing that's going to, well, we might need, if you applied and you gave us unofficial copies of something during the application, if you gave us unofficial transcripts, we will need final, trans or, or maybe you gave us uh, you know junior year transcripts because you didn't finish high school yet. So we'll need final transcripts uh, showing all your grades and if you give it, um, or like the official copy if you didn't give the official copy in the beginning. So that's what the final transcripts means. Then you'll start exploring housing options. Uh, that's something that is in one of the next steps after acceptance. And then there will be a mandatory orientation that you'll attend. Um, there'll be two orientations. There'll be one for you specifically as an international student and then there'll be also a campus-wide one as well. So that's kind of what you can expect if you are accepted and uh, what, what, what will happen after that. All right, so just kind of wrap up. Uh, what we went over today was, you know, the college selection process, and you know what those six, you know, real key factors are in terms of size, location, 
academics and programs that are available at the university, reputation, academic fit, and of course, cost. Um, then we also went through the admissions process here at CU Denver at the undergraduate level. It's really just a, a three-step process. Um, especially if you're here in College Week Live and you're watching this video, you don't even have to pay the application fee. So really all you're doing is a, you're applying, online application, submit your transcripts, and submit your English um, proof of English language proficiency. And that will that's really all we need. Um, last thing here, there is a virtual tour of campus. Um, don't know if that's an active link, so I apologize. But if you go to ucdenver.edu, you will um, be able to take that virtual tour. So that is available to us on the home page. Um, at this time, if you do need to learn more about our programs, um, I've said this what, you know, website a few times in the presentation, but please visit internationaladmissions.ucdenver.edu uh, for complete information about how to apply um, and more information about specific programs. You know, it's, it's really well linked to different areas on uh, on our main website, so you should be able to get all the information that you need. If you can't find the information you need, please email us right away uh, at application at ucdenver.edu uh, and then we will follow up with you. If you want to email me directly, uh, my email address is Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y dot Hofer, H-O-E-F as in France, E-R, at ucdenver.edu. Again, it's gregory.hofer at ucdenver.edu. If you guys want to get in touch with me, uh, we have the phone number here, 315-2382. That's our uh, main, um, you know, main international admissions phone number if you want to get a hold of me directly. Um, I'm, I love, you know, love talking to students and I'll be, be willing to help. My direct number is 303-315-2236. Um, and you know, get, feel free to give me a call anytime, and I'll, I'll get those questions answered for you. Um, you know, hopefully you enjoyed the presentation. Hopefully it was informative for you. Uh, you know, please let us know again if there's anything at all that you need or isn't unclear about the admissions process or about the program that you're interested in. Don't hesitate to contact us. All right. And again, I thank you for your time uh, this afternoon. Uh, hopefully it was uh, informative and useful for you. At this time. Um, you know, I'll leave it open for a couple minutes of questions. I, I do not so let me know or type some questions in the box if there are any at the moment. All right. And if not, I will just call that, you know, wrap it up. Um, again, thank you for your time. Hopefully this will be you over here to, uh, in someday here on, on our campus gradu uh, our, at our graduation ceremony. Uh, we do have a cap ready for you if you are ready to work hard and uh, pursue your academic dreams and goals. So again, please don't hesitate to contact us if there's anything that you need. And hopefully we'll see you on campus someday uh, here in Denver. All right. Thanks again.